All right, y'all look at that right there. Now that's one coat of, uh, of that urethane that I put on there yesterday. And what I've done is I've gone in there and, and scuffed the whole, you know, sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper. That's what, uh, that's that white stuff that you're looking at right there. All that is is the dust from, uh, from that, you know, that urethane. Anyway, every time you uh, put a coat of that stuff on, I always go, you know, every time it dries, I go in there and I, I sand it. And uh, that way you're just going to make it smoother. Plus you're going to, you're going to scar the surface of this urethane right here up enough that that will actually, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll bond better to a, a little lightly scuffed up surface than it will a smooth one, if that makes any sense. Or that's the way I look at it anyway. Anyway, uh, we had a good front come in last night and uh, we got some good, you know, some low humidity today. So I'm fixing to put another coat on it right now. Anyway, uh, oh, I was going to show you this right here. This is what I do right here when I don't, uh, when I don't want to waste, uh, you know, paint thinner, you know, to clean up and stuff with. I just put it in a Ziploc bag <clears throat> or you can take saran wrap or whatever and put it over your brush. And uh, then you don't have to, uh, you don't have to clean it every time. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it just saves on uh, on cleanup. Anyway, and I always just get the old throwaway brushes that cost four or five dollars a piece, and then that way you're not wasting, you know, you're not wasting uh, five or six dollars worth of uh, paint thinner trying to clean up a four dollar brush. You know. Anyway, and you can get the whole job out of that one brush right there. Maybe you can anyway before the bristles start coming out of it. But it's turning out really good. Hope y'all are enjoying the video, but like I said, it's it's all uh, it's coming along good. But you can see the scratches in there where that sandpaper. And all it's doing is just when you when that stuff dries, it makes that grain that light that that loose grain stand up. And then when you go back in there and sand it, it just it makes it smooth, smooth. Anyway, it's turning out good. Hope y'all are enjoying the video. Uh, I know I'm still working on getting a stove and sink, but I'm hoping to get that in the next day or so and get this. Get this thing done and start cooking in here. But so far, it's looking really good. Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell you, between each coat, after I sand it with the with the 180, like I said, you don't have to have 180. You could do 220 or you could do a sanding block, you know, a fine sanding block. You don't want to go with a coarse grit when you're... Uh, when you're doing that but anyway between you know every time i do that sanding i do go back and wipe everything off because if anything any of that loose debris you don't want it going back into the second coat of paint because then you're doing you know you're doing the same thing again you know what i'm saying but anyway uh, so i do go back and wipe you know take a dry cloth and just wipe it off uh between coats and uh, just gonna make it it's gonna make it a whole lot better you know, wanting it smooth. You can see all that dust. And all that is is that that urethane. Anyway, fix to get in, and I'm gonna put another coat on it, and uh, we're gonna see what it looks like when I get done with that. It ought to really shine. But I did get satin. I really don't like a high gloss, so I just got like a satin finish. Look at that right there. Shining like a new penny, isn't it? And that's satin too. I mean, that's not the uh, that's not the high gloss, but it's it's wet right now. Oh, I would recommend going thin on your second coat and your third coat. Well, all the coats go thinner uh, because more coats on there is going to be better than say two or three really super thick coats because they're just not going to cure out right. It's going to take a lot longer for it to dry. It's so. Uh, it's easier if you can spray this stuff then you can actually control the material better than you can with a brush or, or a roller or whatever because you're going to have spots with a brush like i've got i can see it where it's piled up i've got too much paint or too much uh, urethane in certain spots and uh, if i go back and brush it now all i'm going to do is leave streaks and lines you know because it's so uh, with the humidity low like this it's so uh, you know it's drying out fast it's tacking up fast so you need to do it and then get off of it. You don't need to just keep brushing it because you'll leave bubbles and streaks and lines and dry spots. And, uh, you know, and I know this is not the finishing coat, but uh, you still, you try to make every coat as uniform as possible. And spraying it is better, in my opinion. You can just do a better job with a spray, with a, uh, 
you know, spray gun. But <clears throat> I got a, a brush right here, and they work too, you know. Anyway, look at this right here. Look at these two right here. Ain't that crazy? Two fox squirrels right there playing on that tree. Ain't that it's hard to beat that right there. Anyway, it's coming along pretty good, and uh, hope y'all are enjoying it. Won't be long now. We're going to have this thing hooked. Y'all look at this old fella right here. I've been looking for one of these, and a friend of mine brought it to me yesterday morning. He found it in old barn. I am just tickled to death. Anyway, it's it's uh, it's perfect for what I'm doing. It's rustic. It's it's beat up a little bit. So, the, you know, the, where the porcelain's chipped off of it, which just adds character to me. That's just the way I am. I like it rustic looking. But anyway, it's it's got the drain boards on both sides, so it's perfect for processing meat. You know, everything will drain back to the sink on each side, so you're not making a mess all over the countertops. You know, and anyway, it's it's just it's it's what I've been looking for. Anyway, oh. Uh, been to googling this morning trying to figure out a way to clean this little nasty thing and get it you know get it cleaned up back white oh i had some people concerned about the white stove and the reason i got the white stove is because of this right here that's the reason i got it i've been looking for one of these right here and uh to go in there and i wanted the stove to match it you know I had a lot of folks that was you know were concerned about that not matching the rest of the kitchen but this is the reason why Anyway, we were Googling a way to clean it up, and it said, oh, use a uh, baking soda, a sponge. I don't have a sponge. I had an old sock, though, and uh, peroxide. So that's what I'm fixing to do right now. I'm going to see if I can clean it up and, and uh, get this thing looking good this morning and go ahead and have, get it installed, and it uh, should be about close to being done. You know, we should be cooking on there pretty quick. I am going to have to make a, a backsplash of wooden backsplash right here on the back to cover that because you'll be able to see you'll be able to see you know that back back there and i want to cover that up so i have to cut a, a two by oh i don't know it may have to be four or five inches tall to cover the back the back side of the backsplash of the sink anyway y'all hang in there we're gonna get this bad boy done and uh, i'll be posting the last video i'm hoping by late this afternoon all right here we are folks she's about finished i think i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna end the video i'm gonna put one more coat of uh, of the urethane on the tops oh i've still got to put a coat on the back of this backsplash right here oh this is the reason i put the white stove in here is because i wanted it to match this old sink right here that a friend of mine brought me y'all check out that sink right there that's old school right there and i know it's scratched and it's dinged that's the way i like it right there just like that Anyway, I had to put a backsplash up here and I had to change this up a little bit, but uh, oh, all I've got to do is put uh, a couple of coats on this 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 one by six in the back back here and uh, on front and back, and, and I'm going to caulk around this right here to hold this down. I got some clear uh, Lexale. I'm going to caulk around that to hold that down, and then that'll be done. Oh, I, I, I know I didn't paint the floor. I'm going to get to that later on, but... Uh, Oh, it's not too bad with the rug right here. We had a rug inside that we was fixing to change out that was under the dining room table. I just took it out and it fit in here pretty good. So I said, well, I'll just go with this right here and then I'll paint it later on. Had some people asking about this being open up here. Oh, if I was going to put some wire over it. No, I'm going to leave it open like that because of that smoker. You know, we've got this good breeze. Well, you know, there's no sense in putting wire over that and uh, keep to try to keep the critters out because, uh, you know, they're going to come right through here. So, you know, we've got, uh, there's, there's, it's, it's an outdoor kitchen. That's what it's going to be. So, you know, stuff can come and go and, and uh, we just, we're not going to keep any food out here. So the coons and the possums and all that, we're just going to do cooking out here and then keep everything, uh, food content inside you know in the house keep you know keep the critters out but anyway turned out really good on the plumbing under here what i did is uh i ran pecs but i also put a drain in the line so i can drain all of these lines i can cut this valve off to go into that faucet right there and uh and drain it from underneath and then that way when it gets cold oh you know we'll be good you know we won't have to worry about that though uh, we won't have to worry about that line busting Anyway, turned out really good, I think. Uh, like I said, I've still got a little minor stuff to do here and there, but we should be good to cook pretty quick. Oh, uh, the next, uh, 
The next one we're going to do, I'm going to build a bar, a couple of, uh, about three bar stools right here. That's probably going to be the next video I'm going to work on. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the video on the outdoor kitchen, and uh, I'm sure this won't be the last one. But we about got it done. Look at that, looking good. Appreciate you. All right, let's give you a look, one more look at the outside. Turned out pretty good, didn't it, Goo? Yep. Y'all meet Merle. Yep, that's Hannah's. My buddy. Yep, little son there. Spoiled ain't the word. So bad. Anyway, here it is, y'all. Finished up. Oh, I'll put a sealer on this. I was going to let this turn gray on the outside a little bit, and then I'll probably put some kind of sealer on it, clear coat of some kind. Got some cleaning up to do, but uh, looking good. Looking real good. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate